looks like the St. Ives of the Dales. What I've come to see is homegrown, born as he was in the shadow of Elekin. Tim, what a wonderful location for an artist to have his studio in. D did it happen by accident or design? A bit of both, really. I grew up round here, um, and so I didn't really have any, much option. The parents moved us here, and so we grew up in this location. But I've grown to love it, and it's the best place to be an artist in, I have to say. Now, what came first, the art mm. Or the inspiration? Was it the, the countryside that started it all off or, or something else? It was a, a manic need to draw constantly when I wasn't either eating or sleeping from about the age of four, apparently. I'm a line man. Um, I did um, illustration down at the University of Kingston, um, did a degree there, and we were basically taught to draw. Um, I wasn't trained as a fine artist. I was trained as a technical um, illustrator, so we drew, drew nudes, landscapes, still lives, constantly for three years. And so I've sidestepped into the fine art world. You see, etching is all about line. It's about making very fine lines into steel. And so etching suits my technique the most. Now, I have to freely admit that etching is a mystery to me. Yeah. I love the finished product. Yeah. I love seeing the bits and pieces that go into it, yeah. but I don't understand it. Can you explain it? Um, very simply, yes. I go out, sit on a hillside, do a drawing be it of a scene that just catches my imagination. Then I, I come back and I get a steel plate, a thin steel sheet, and I heat up the, the steel plate and I roll beeswax over it, a very thin layer. And I then copy my original drawing through the beeswax, I draw through the beeswax with a steel pen, revealing the steel underneath. And then you plunge that into a bath of nitric acid, and the acid eats metal. Um, but it can't bite through the beeswax, so it just bites where you've drawn your lines. If you rub um, oil-based inks into that, and then lay paper over the top, and run it through uh, um, three tons of pressure on, on an etching press, you get an impression, because the paper pulls the ink out of the etched lines. And in short, that's, that's etching. It's, it's not simple, it's fiendishly difficult. I've wept before um, uh, trying to deal with it because every single part of the process has to be perfect, otherwise you fail. Um, the materials are very costly and so there is a huge incentive not to make a mess because you, you simply couldn't afford it. And how do you build up the colours? You mix them by hand, literally by looking at the colours in front of me from where I'm drawing and then you apply them to the steel plate with scrim, which is like fine canvas, and you paint them onto the plate. And then I apply more inks by rolling large rollers over the top, and then print once, and, and that's, that's your print. Quite apart from having chosen an unusual uh, medium, etching, yeah. you also have this unusual style. I think you call it vertigo, do you? Can yeah. You, can you explain that? Yeah. Um, nothing to do with Alfred Hitchcock, although, I, you know, got to take my hat off to him. But I was in New York, and I found myself at the top of the Empire State Building with a very, very cheap Instamatic camera. And so I went to the edge and thought it would be quite a good idea to stick my hand over right over, point the camera down, and take a shot. Thought no more of it, and when I got the photos back, there, w there was this vertigo shot looking down on Broadway, and I made a very large oil painting of it initially. And that's where it all started. And moving on from that, I exhibited the oil painting in the Asquig show, and it was a packed uh, preview, and a, a very wealthy landover landowner from the area came up to me and in a huge voice he said you see that painting up there and I, I said yes and I knew what was coming and he said it, it makes me sick so I said thank you very much and he wandered off and about 20 minutes later he came back and he said that painting I said yes he said, it still makes me sick and I'm buying it from our son who also makes me sick <laughs> Well, the nearest thing I suppose we have around here to the Empire State Building would be uh, Bolton Castle. Yeah, of course. 
and yeah. you've you've been giving giving that the the full treatment. Yes, trying to give it the full Monty. Um, it's uh, it's a wild place. Um, it's slightly spooky, um, but that probably makes it more exciting, a bit like a Grimm's fairy tale. But it must be very tricky you getting into position <clears throat> to get your vertigo picture in places like yeah, it's a bit precarious sometimes. It can be a little bit dangerous. You just have to watch your step, really. But that feeling in your stomach when you look, look over a wall and, and you've got the ground falling away, I like that feeling um, because I think I do suffer from vertigo. And it's my way of... Um, Facing the demons. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Now, I know that your pictures are bought by some very high-profile institutions and people. Can yeah. you tell me about that? Prince Charles started it. He has an etching of mine called Ribble Head Viaduct. Um, which I was able to give him in London. He opened a one-man show I had there at the Prince's Trust head office. And I uh, was honoured enough that he accepted a, an etching. And then the uh, Palace of Westminster, the um, House of Lords and Commons, uh, they've very recently bought 16 etchings for the permanent collection. Um, Vertigo? No, <laughs> no, they, they went for the Dales. Oh, really? Yeah. They've probably got enough to make them sick already, then. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yes, I haven't drawn the dome yet, either. And what is the moment when you find your greatest satisfaction? Is it, is, is it part of the process? Is it the end yeah. product? What is it? It's that point where you've run the etching through the press and you pick up the corner of the paper and you just peel it back and every single time, it's just magic. It's very rewarding. I haven't got bored of it yet in years.